Hey guys, you're with Tesla Tom. Thanks for joining us on Ludicrous Feed. So today I wanted to talk about my Powerwall 2, given that it's a new year and there's been plenty of updates since I bought this Powerwall 2 18 months ago. Just for comparison's sake, this is a, a my bodyboard, my boogie board commonly known in Australia. And as you can see, it's a little bit bigger in width, but certainly in, in height, it's about the same size. There is an on-off switch here on the side and a blink screen when it's working. And there's an isolated switch as well on this side. And I'll show you the gateway that comes with the Powerwall 2. And that basically coordinates solar, the battery, the grid, and your house all in one. And um, the most exciting thing about the Powerwall 2 is actually your app. So at the moment it's not charging because it's raining outside and I've only got a very small solar array. But when it does charge, you can see that it is charging and you can see it's blinking green, as I said before. Let's have a look at power flow. So like I said, it's only producing 0.5 kilowatt from my solar array and it's going straight to the house. But normally if there's any excess, it'll charge to the Powerwall 2. Uh, as you can see, the grid's not being used currently because the solar array is working. Let's have a look at this tab here, performance. So today you can see that it's been self-powered 32%. I've had to use the grid quite a bit because it's been raining. But you can also look at stats from yesterday. So there we go, Powerwall 2 and solar have contributed 58% of my usage. You can look at stats from the month of January. Looking a bit better because there was some, some sun earlier in the week. And I'll go through what these mean, partial peak, off peak. So for example, in the month of January, all month it was 95% self-powered. During the partial peak period, which is uh, the shoulder period we call here, between off peak and peak, 75% self-powered. And during off peak times, it was self-powered 28% of the time. All right, so let's look at uh, the backup history. So these are the times when the Powerwall 2 uh, had to be used in backup mode. Now I'll go through backup mode a bit later, but that's essentially when um, the grid is failing or there's a blackout and then the Powerwall 2 has to power your house. So the last known event was in January 3rd, a few days ago. Uh, I think there was a bit of a surge or something in my house. Um, the lights sort of flicked quickly and you can see the Powerwall 2 just um, kicking in for a minute at the time. And you can uh, customize the Powerwall 2 quite a bit. I'll go through this as well. So backup only, um, it says 100% of your Powerwall is rever reserved for backup at all times. So that means that at all times the solar uh, will charge your Powerwall 2 up to 100% and keep it there. Uh, I guess if you need this um, as a backup unit uh, instead of powering your house. So the, the house will still be powered by the grid, but you'll have 100% reserve in there just in case. Self-power. Now, this is useful uh, if you uh, just want to be basically off-grid. So, if you're confident that your usage is less than the amount your solar and your power to can generate, then leave it on self-powered all the time, and you'll never have to use the grid at all. So, this here is reserved for power outage, okay? So, you can reserve what percentage you want for uh, any event of a blackout. So, you can go as high as you want by 1% increments to 100%. Um, so there we go, I can make it 100%, essentially it's the same as this function here. Or I can bring it back down to zero. Now, um, from what I've read and from what Tesla say, it's not good to keep your battery at 0% at all, um, because it takes a lot of energy to bring it back up from zero. So what I do is I normally keep it between 15 and 20%. So if it's like a rainy day, I'll keep it at 15%. Um, and if it's a sunny day, I'll keep it at 20%. So anywhere between 15 and 20, I'll leave it at 15% for now. Now, advanced setting. Now, this is useful because, um, so like I said, self-power is useful if you're, if you're confident that the grid doesn't have to be used, if you can self-power your house and with uh, the battery and solar. But if you have a small array like myself, or if you use a lot of electricity, and the power to is basically just a top-up, um, then you can use the advanced mode. So there are two settings in advanced mode. There's balanced and there's cost saving, okay? Cost saving is essentially when uh, the Powerwall 2 will use the grid to charge itself during off-peak times. So that's another point I want to make, is that if you've got a battery, you sh really should be on a time-of-use plan. My off-peak time is like half of my standard tariff, um, and I, even though my peak hours are higher, I rarely use peak hours because the battery is on between the hours of 2 and 8 p.m., which is when my electricity is highest on a time-of-use plan. I hope that makes sense, but that's what cost saving is good for. It'll charge the battery during off-peak times, and then if necessary, use it during peak times. Um, and it'll save you a lot of money, because you're basically um, shifting your off-peak time to peak times because of the battery. Now, balanced is um, basically, I find that during the day, if you've got a rainy day like today, um, 
it's smart enough to reserve what's in the tank, so to speak, or in the battery to use um, during the peak times and during the day when electricity is a little bit cheaper, like during the shoulder period, um, it will use the grid. So that's, that's what balanced is. Use the grid when it's a little bit cheaper for the house and then reserve what's in the battery for uh, peak usage at night time and in the evening. So that's the difference between cost saving and balanced. So I'll leave it at balanced for the time being because it is during the day and it's currently raining outside. And that's basically it. Um, I'll click edit price schedule. Like I said before, you can work out when your peak times are and when your off peak times are um, during the week and also during the weekends because my tariff's different on the weekends. There's no peak time during the weekends and public holiday. But during the week, you can set when your peak hours are, when your off peak hours are, and the battery will work out when. For example, last night, I set this on cost saving mode and at 10 o'clock sharp, the battery started charging from the grid, knowing that today is going to be a rainy day and I'm not going to get too much electricity from my solar panels. So that is when it's useful, that sort of load shifting uh, for the uh, for off-peak and peak times. So very handy from that point of view. Now this is a latest edition, Stormwatch. I've made a video on this before, but essentially from what I understand is that when a storm is coming up on the weather forecast, it'll charge your battery um, to 100% so that in case there's a grid failure, in case there's a, pe a blackout, the power wall will be uh, powering your house uh, when all your neighbours will be out of power. So that's quite handy to have, I think, the Stormwatch app. And of course, I'll make a video on that if a thunderstorm is coming up. So that's basically the app. It's very handy. And then you can see the version number as well, which you can click on and give you the details of the latest version. Uh, it'll always update over the air, so you don't have to worry about having to update it yourself, which is very handy. All right, so the next thing I want to do is do a uh, grid failure test with um, my meter, and I'll also show you the gateway as well. Okay, guys, I'm on the side of my house outside. This is my meter board, and as I said, this is the gateway. This is the brains of the operation, basically communicates in real time what the house needs and how much it can discharge and how much it can export to the grid, all that kind of thing. So very handy. You can't do much with it. It's, uh, it's pretty boring on the inside. I'll show you quickly. You know, it basically has signs saying don't touch, leave for Tesla, so I don't have too much to do with it usually. As you can see, it's not very big. It sits on the side of the house. Um, not very interesting. This is my meter board. I should also tell you that the app has a 45 second lag with regards to what's going on with the house. All right, so we're gonna do a grid failure today and I'm gonna have this running the whole time. That's the main switch there. And I'm gonna flick it off and we're gonna see what happens, okay? So here we go, off. So now we have to wait 45 seconds. And uh, I don't have any good jokes to tell you, unfortunately. Oh, there we go, that was quick. That was not even like 10 seconds. So there it is there. So you can see the grid's got a big cross and interestingly the solar is still coming. So um, it's still charging the power wall too miraculously and it's powering the house. So I guess I could do this test at night time when you can guarantee there's no sun and the power wall too will be feeding the house. So we're lucky today there's still a little bit of sun uh, but as you can see the house is still going strong and the power wall too is still charging. And you know what, I'm going to go inside and ask the kids, because they're at home at the moment, and see whether it's affected them at all. Alright, so give me one second. Okay guys, I'm inside the house and you can see this is my oven clock. And I promise you the power wall 2 is still, uh, is still in, in backup mode. And normally if there's a grid failure, this is one of the first things I notice. Obviously the lights will blink on the oven. So that's pretty cool. And same deal with the microwave, the lights are still on, the clock is still going. Okay, now I'm in my laundry and the lights can still turn on. Amazing, really. Okay guys, status report. The kids are happy, the internet's still going. Uh, Joy is still using the internet to do her work on the computer. No complaints inside the house. As you can see, all the lights are still working. And as you can see on my app, it's uh, still grid failure, okay? So it's still across on the grid. And the solar is still going, charging the power to powering the house. And obviously the Wi-Fi is still working because I've still got the three bars or whatever it is for the Wi-Fi. So, you know what, That's I think that's one major benefit of having a power wall too, uh, especially with a gateway. I'm not sure whether solar alone can deal with a grid failure or with a, with a uh, power failure. Uh, I think you need the power wall to's gateway separately to ensure that solar is still going and still um, powering your house at the same time. All right, so let me put the um, power back on, and I'll put this back here in real time for you to have a look at, and flip the switch back on. There it is. 
and again we wait 45 seconds again I've got no jokes to tell you um, just got to wait unfortunately and I'm not going to cut away because I don't want to you know you guys to think it's fake or I'm putting it on but it should quickly power up again and it should uh, go back to normal function so we'll keep waiting for the time being. It's taking a bit longer this time, which is interesting. It's definitely on. And normally it's about 45 seconds, like I said, so we'll just keep waiting for the time being. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so now a notification's come up. Power Wall 2 is Oh, you saw that quick modification, power wall 2 is 27% and providing power to your house, but that I think uh, is a little bit delayed from when I did do the grid failure. Let's go back here just to check what's going on. Okay, alright, I can hear a click on the power wall 2 just then. That's a good sign, alright, so interesting. So during that grid failure, I couldn't check anything, but now this normal screen's come back on. And like I said, I didn't cut away, so you've, you've got all that in real time. And so it's, this is when it sort of calibrates itself and works out what's going on. I call this like the working out phase. Um, so yeah, it's a bit muddled, but just give it, a, give it some time, give it 30, 40 seconds and we'll resume uh, normal operation very soon. But I heard that click on the Power Wall 2's gateway, so I know that things are almost back to normal again. Alright, so that's interesting. And uh, there we are. That is simulating a grid failure, or a blackout situation, and your Power Wall 2 uh, will kick in and power your house. Like I said, the kids didn't notice anything, uh, the wife didn't notice anything, and that's very useful in a situation where there's a storm or there's a blackout. Your house will keep going. Alright, so there we are. That is grid failure. Alright guys, well, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, and to leave a comment, I'd love to hear from you. If you're getting a power wall too, hopefully you found that useful. I've had this machine now for about 18 months. So I've got, uh, I've got enough data to comment uh, on its usage. Uh, any issues that have come up as well. Alright guys, hopefully it's a lovely day wherever you are in this world. And as always, happy charging. Thanks for watching and thanks for being part of the energy revolution. If you haven't done so already, be sure to hit subscribe to stay up to date with our latest videos. If you're about to buy a Tesla, use my promo code THOMAS7208 to score 6 months of free supercharging. Happy charging!